And we have reached Jason Lum. He's the chair of the Fraser Valley Regional District that covers six municipalities in the lower mainland. Most are being hit by flooding, including Abbotsford and Hope. Jason is also a Chilliwack City Councillor. So, Jason, want to start off by saying, uh, you know, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Um, but you are overseeing a large portion of districts that are impacted the flood by this flooding. So if you can, how are things going today? Well, uh, over here, we're just starting to evaluate uh, the damage from last night. I know uh, the Fraser Valley Regional District covers about 14,000 square kilometers of, of land in the province of British Columbia. We're the third largest regional district in the province. Um, it's important to note the distinction between municipalities like Abbotsford, Hope, Chilliwack, um, larger municipalities with resources that they would action on their own to uh, provide response. The Fraser Valley Regional District is providing response for the electoral and rural areas outside of those incorporated cities. So they are often rural and remote areas. They're hard to get to. They're extremely uh, geographically challenging. And uh, right now, they're really uh, bearing the brunt of a, a lot of these uh, storm events. So uh, we've already had at least uh, one landslide uh, reported that's shut down one of the major uh, highways in the area as a result of this third atmospheric river. Uh, we were doing tactical evacuations in the Chilliwack River Valley until late last uh, evening. And uh, at this point, I haven't even made it into the emergency operations center because I've been pumping out my own yard and basement hmm. from flooding at night. So you've also been personally impacted by this then? And in comparison to the people who've lost their homes and their livelihood, uh, we are very, very lucky here in uh, the area of town that I live, but uh, there are some uh, some absolute heart, absolutely heartbreaking stories that uh, I'm hearing about, continue to hear about, of people who are facing just total devastation. Yeah, uh, and Jason, you've been quite critical of the response by the provincial government particularly over the time that it took for them uh, to respond to your request for help uh, for Othello Road in Hope, B.C. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the criticism you have, but then I also want to talk about what we've heard uh, more recently from the Minister for Public Safety, Mark Farnworth, uh, who has said, and, and I quote, uh, to be clear, the claim that local governments need to wait on the province to receive authorization to take public safety actions is incorrect. So let's talk a little bit about your criticism and your response to what we're now hearing from the province. Sure, and I highlighted a little bit in my previous statement that there is a bit of a disparity in terms of response from regional districts and the tools that they have available to them and the provincial uh, legislation that we are required to follow. I pointed out Othello Road because that is an area that is infrastructure that does not belong to the Fraser Valley Regional District. It's infrastructure that exists outside of a funding area, a service area that we can actually have money to provide works for. So when we uh, do a call out to the provincial government for in critical funds to protect uh, life safety and property in the area, there's also a natural gas pipeline in the area. There's uh, Ministry of Transportation has obviously the road in the area. We're doing it because we believe we can undertake works to protect uh, the area. And if we don't get those funds approved uh, from the province, there is simply no pot of money to draw on to do them. In areas where we do have uh, service areas and they're approved by the province, we are undertaking those works. We are not waiting for provincial approval. So the minister is correct when he says that. But the important caveat to note is that we are not the same as a large municipality like uh, Abbotsford or like Chilliwack. When we are dealing with uh, rural areas and 20,000 uh, residents in this large geographic area, we just don't have the same capacity in terms of actioning response. And if we're going to take the lead and we're asking for funding, it means that we critically need access to those funds and we need them uh, uh, without delay. A part of leading this response, as we've been asked to do, is to point out uh, gaps and challenges when we find them. You know, what I'm trying to do here is to identify some gaps in response so I don't have to tell somebody that their home is going to be lost. So our electoral area directors aren't desperately standing with 
residents as they're literally have to watch their homes fall and get swallowed up in the river. So if we can do better, if we can make these processes quicker and less bureaucratic, then I think it behooves us to do that. And Jason, I want you to, to look towards the future. Of course, this cleanup is going to go on for a long time. Uh, we know that these sorts of events could come back, that they could hit once again. What sort of response do you want to see from the province in the future? Well, let me be clear. We're all learning from these events, right? They are, uh, to, to have three atmospheric rivers and the amount of precipitation that we've experienced, the amount of uh, overland flooding, the high stream flow events, the slides, the washouts, the, uh, the seepage through our diking infrastructure. These uh, events all happening at once is unprecedented. And so when we're looking at how to action a response, one of the things is to realize time is not a luxury that we have. So if we need to move quickly or we need to pre-advance funds to regional districts in order to perform discretionary works um, that are emergency in nature and that will protect property and that will keep people's livelihoods and keep people safe, then I need, I need to do that and worry about the paperwork and worry about the accounting side on the back end after we immediately take action. So you're saying here that you just don't have the luxury of time when it comes to responding to these sorts of things that people need help uh, immediately when they need help. But I'm wondering what sort of things you've been hearing from residents in the area uh, about how they've been affected, about how the province has been responding. What have residents been telling you? There's a, there's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of stress. There's been a lot of sleepless nights. I don't know many people in this region that slept much last night because you're listening and watching the rain just literally pound down. The, the creeks and streams and canals are starting to uh, overflow and there's nowhere for this water to go. So there's a lot of stressed out people. There's a lot of frayed nerves. And I want to be clear, myself included. So I don't want to be... Uh, putting people in a situation where uh, they're unsafe and I don't want to be putting people in a situation where we have to tell them that they can't return to their homes. I want to look, uh, you know, I want to go to bed every night thinking that we've done every possible thing that we can to get people help. And if it means speeding the process up and if it means we had to ruffle uh, some feathers and point out gaps in the process, then so be it. Okay. Jason, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Uh, we wish you and everyone in your community uh, the best as you start this cleanup. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Jason Lum is in Chilliwack, B.C. He's the chair of the Fraser Valley Regional District.